that were brought up on the Joe Rogan experience. One is that the Nevada test site footage of the, the buildings getting blown apart aren't real because the cameras aren't moving. Another conspiracy theory. The, you've seen all the you've seen all the grainy footage of nuclear uh, test blasts that you've, you've seen sure. with the mushroom clouds. And there are always these grainy things, and there's all these like little houses lined up and these little trees yes. lined up, and it blows everything down. Well, there's always been a conspiracy theory that those were all basically fabricated at this facility. That those bombs actually were never detonated. Um, and that basically, the U.S. military was uh, was basically faking these bomb tests to freak out the Russians uh, to make us think that we had um, uh, weapons. We had basically a, a potent potency toward a nuclear weapon arsenal that we actually didn't have at the time. How did they fake it? Um, they just did. Yeah. Exactly. So this is it. Well, so there's a uh, yeah. Okay. So here's the question, right? So what happened? Okay, so this is great. Okay, you love this. So what happened to the camera? You son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. What how how is that happening yet the camera is like totally stable and fine? Oh my god. And, and by the way, in the film is fine. The, radi the, the, the radiation uh, didn't uh, cause any damage to the film. Oh my god. This, this looks like how you shoot. Well, by the way, okay, we'll do this one. We'll do this one more time here. Where's the, let's see the car. The Where's car's the car? right behind the house. Do you know the technique that they use to film that so that the camera and the film isn't messed up? So. Again, I wasn't there during the atmospheric testing, so I can just tell you what I've learned over the many years and talking to so many people that actually were out there in the 1950s. So I would disagree with that conclusion that it was, it was all forged data. Why? Well, one of the things that was developed during nuclear testing was extremely high-speed photography because you needed to capture images of, of that atomic test in a fraction of, of a second. You're, you're watching, you know, for example, after after the, the the test starts, you're seeing just images of the fireball as it's beginning to expand because you're taking such high-speed photography. There's a company called eg and g and some of its founders uh, contributed to development of just that high-speed technology. So my belief is that that same sort of camera technology was utilized in all aspects of capturing those images. So if you, if you see a, a, a nuclear blast that's going through a, a series of pine trees, and that actually was conducted out at the Nevada test site, they, can, they uh, cut down the trees from a surrounding mountain, brought them out to the test site, and tested them with an above ground blast. My belief is that all those, that those tests were captured with high speed so that you could get second by millisecond what was happening with each of the trees because they wanted to understand if war fighters were taking refuge amidst uh, amidst pines were they going to be provide them more shielding from radioactivity or they were going to be a bigger hazard as the shock wave went through those trees